Good afternoon. This is a special coverage of the coronavirus crisis. It's in the combined forces of News 5 and Signal TV's One News, Radio Cinco, and One PH. The Transportation Department has announced that all trains in Metro Manila will operate in reduced capacity once the enhanced community quarantine is lifted. According to, the, to Transportation Under Secretary for Railways, Timothy John Batan, LRT-1 will only ferry 12% of its original capacity or 150 passengers per trip. LRT2 will only accommodate 10% of capacity or 160 passengers. MRT3 at 13% capacity or 153 passengers. And PNR at 20% capacity or 148 passengers. The reduction in capacity per train was based on the simulations done by passengers inside trains maintaining one meter social distancing. All rail lines will have markings, signages, tarpaulins, and other forms of information materials to ensure strict implementation of railway protocols. Solicitor General Jose Calida defends the National Telecommunications Commission or the NTC from critics and insists that they are barking up the wrong tree on the controversial ABS-CBN shutdown. Kalida says the NTC is just following the law when it did not allow the network to operate without a franchise from Congress. He adds that it is the fault of Congress for not acting on the ABS-CBN franchise that has been pending since 2016. The government's top lawyer also calls the, the cease and desist order a triumph of the rule of law. Kalida previously warned the NTC that it may face graft charges if the commission will grant provisional authority to ABS-CBN after its franchise expired on Monday. ABS-CBN has gone off-air in compliance with a cease and desist order by the NTC. The House Franchise Committee says they were taken off guard by the move while they have yet to deliberate on the network's franchise. Ria Fernandez is live at the Batasang Pabansa to give us the latest. Ria, anong pinaplanong hakbang ng Kongreso kognay sa usaping ito? Bok aminado ang ilang kongresista da nasa kamara naman daw talaga ang responsibilidad sa franchise ng ABS-CBN na dapat daw ay sanay matagal nang naresolba. Sabi ni Buhay Party List Representative Lito Atienza, matagal na niyang hinihimok ang mga kasamahan na aksyonan na ang franchise renewal bid ng ABS. Pero imbes na gawaran ng extension ng network, inipuan lang daw nila ang panukala. Para kay Atienza, walang ibang dapat sisihin kung hindi ang liderato sa Kamara dahil wala naman daw kapangyarihan ng National Telecommunications Commission sa mga prangkisa. Partikular sa mga dapat sisihin anya ay si House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano. Matatanda ang unang sinabi ni Cayetano na hindi prioridad ang pagtalakay sa prangkisa ng ABS. Narito ang pahayag ni Congressman Atienza. The responsibility lies in the shoulder of Speaker Cayetano. Sa nakuroon na nagsasabing nakakahiya itong ginagawa namin ito. Parang ayaw namin magtrabaho. Tapos sasabihin natin yung NTC nagtulang. We will cite them for contempt. Magiging lalo ng katawa-tawa ang kongreso. Bok para naman sa aksyon ng Kamara, mainam na iakyat na mula sa Legislative Franchises Committee sa sesyon nila mamaya ang isyo ng ABS-CBN ayon kay Atienza. Kasabay nito, tanggalin na rin daw bilang hepe ng nasabing komite si Palawan Representative Franz Alvarez dahil hindi naman anya ito nagtrabaho. Gait din ni Albay Representative Ed Selagman, wala nang ibang solusyon dito bukod sa pagre-renew ng kamara sa prangkisa ng network. Dapat daw ay nagsilbi ng go signal sa kamara sa pag-aksyon sa prangkisa ang pagtanggap ng Pangulo ng apology ng ABS-CBN officials patungkol sa mga campaign ad ng presidente na hindi naiere. Isinusulong naman ni Cagayan de Oro Representative Rufus Rodriguez na mabigyan ng provisional franchise ang ABS-CBN hanggang sa katapusan ng 18th Congress sa June 30, 2022. Nagha in din siya ng panukalang batas para sa panibagong 25-year franchise ng network. Boksa ngayon, balak ng Franchise Committee na maisa lang sa pagdinig itong ABS-CBN Franchise Bills. Kaya lamang, ay uh, pinaplansya ba nila ito dahil nga naka-lockdown pa tayo bunsod ng COVID-19. Aminado naman ang kanilang mga miyembro na nagbaski sila, nagulat dito sa pangyayaring ito na tila uh, binali daw ng NTC yung sinumpaan nilang pahayag na magbibigay sila ng provisional authority sa ABS-CBN. Hanggang ngayon, wala pa pahayag si Speaker Cayetano sa isyong ito. Bok?
Pero Ria, kahit mag mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa si Congressman Atienza. He's only one congressman. I'm not even sure if he belongs to the majority. Uh, in the end, uh, I suppose everybody's waiting kung anong masasabi mm -hmm. ng House leadership. Whether it's Speaker Cayetano o yung mga Deputy Speaker. Sa wala pang pahayag, kahit ano, wala pang paramdam, kahit ano, yung uh, panig ni Cayetano at yung ibang leader ng Kamara. Hmm. Kung matatandaan natin at an instance na, ng tanungin kahapon sa sesyon ni uh, Gabriela Party List Representative Arlene Brosas ang House Leadership kung ano na ang parliamentary status ng ABS-CBN Franchise Renewal Bills, ang tumayo doon ay si uh, Deputy Speaker Boying Remulla. At uh, siya, iginigiit din niya na hindi siya, although may nalalaman siya, hindi siya pwedeng mag-speak further sa nalalaman niya dahil base nga daw sa kanilang rules, tanging ang Franchise Committee lamang ang maaaring makapagsalita kung ano na ba talagang progress nitong ABS-CBN Franchise Renewal Bills at ano ang kanilang susunod na hakbang dito. Kaya nakaantabay pa rin tayo kung may agenda nga mamayang alas tres ng hapon sa sesyon nila itong issue ng ABS-CBN. Pero book, si Ketano mismo, si Speaker mismo, uh, has the Speaker been uh, going to uh, the Batasan personally or does he just appear on Zoom? No first day, physically nandito siya. Kahapon, uh, tinitignan natin doon sa live stream nila dito sa press office sa kamera. Um, although nasa listahan na uh, isa siya doon sa mga physically present, but me personally, hindi ko siya nakita sa loob ng plenary hall kung pagbabasehan ko yung live stream. So, tingnan natin mamaya kung ano bang ang magiging sitwasyon, if he's going to be here physically or uh, via Zoom and... Maski tayo, nakaantabay kung ano na ba talaga nga uh, magiging pahayag ni Speaker Cayetano sa isyong ito. Kasi hanggang ngayon, ang sinasabi ng media relations officer niya ay wala pa rin talaga. Oh, oh, but, kasi the, the ball really is in his court and it's been in his court uh, for many months now. So, so I suppose at this point in particular, he should be saying something already about what, uh, what has happened uh, to the guarantees that they've been tossing around uh, for the past few weeks. So, yun po, uh, mamaya, siguro abangan natin kung anong, uh, kung magpapakita at magpaparandam mm -hmm. si Speaker Cayetano dun sa isyong ito. Maraming salamat, Ria mm -hmm. Fernandez, supporting live from the Batasang Pambansa. At least 30 Filipinos based in Rome donated blood in efforts to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. The blood drive was organized by E Para Medici, a group mainly composed of Filipinos. The Association of Blood Donor Organizations in Italy thanked them for the initiative. Since the start of the COVID-19 outbreak, Italian health authorities have been calling for blood donations as blood banks are running low on supply due to the health crisis. Italy currently has the third most number of COVID-19 cases worldwide with over 200,000 infections and 30,000 deaths. And that's the latest on the enhanced and expanded community quarantine. For more updates, follow News 5, The Philippine Star and Business World Online. I'm Ed Lingao and we are One News.